Hi, my name is Jim Schinner. I work in the Hardware Test Center here in the Workstation R&D Lab. In this lab we test dynamics, climatics, and acoustics as well as immunity testing for regulatory agencies. In the environmental control test chambers we subject our workstations to extreme high and low temperatures under controlled humidity conditions. This ensures that our products can survive a cold winter night in North Dakota as well as a hot summer day on a shipping dock in Hong Kong. This is the area we call a fishbowl. This is where we conduct several of the regulatory immunity tests, one of which requires a fixed temperature and humidity range. Moving on, we have the three meter chamber, which is designed for the radiated immunity test. We blast high power RF at the workstation, and we make sure that the workstation can withstand that high intensity stimulus. In this room also, we do acoustics testing because this room provides us the quietest place on site. So our goal here is to have the workstations be the quietest available on the market. What we do in this room is based on our knowledge of the customer base, our history with shipping components all over the world, and so what we do in here is basically our competitive advantage. Um, so I'm going to be kind of vague about levels and things, but I am going to show you the type of tests that we run. Okay? So come on in. Imagine the life, the life, uh, the lifetime of a computer. It gets built in a factory, and then it gets uh, boxed up and shipped to the customer. Right. So we have brand new packaging, brand new boxes back there. We throw the computer in there, throw it up on this table. We're going to do a random vibrations in all three axes because we don't know how it's going to get loaded in the truck. Right. So we're just simulating the randomness of what happens as the thing's driving down the road in the ship, on the train, whatever. The other thing we're going to do on this machine is we're going to do a sign sweep. We're going to look for resonances between the weight of the computer and the, and the density of the foam. And when we find a resonance, we're going to go back and dwell on that resonance. So the whole idea here is that we're trying to exercise this machine more than it ever would in a typical shipment cycle. Um, after each of these tests, we take the machine out of the box, we turn it on, make sure it still works, we take it apart and make sure that we haven't worn through any of the card edge connectors, the gold, because even though it might still work, if we've worn through that gold and got to nickel, in about six months, a year down the road, you might have an unreliable connection there because of corrosion, right? Um, after this, we go over to our package dropper. This is where you want to go. the same computer, run it through all those vibration tests, bring it over here, we drop it 19 times. You can imagine in a normal travel cycle or transportation cycle, you may have it dropped once or twice, right? We're dropping it 19 times just to make sure. Did we go all the way to the top now? We have never gone all the way to the top. No. Can you lift it up a little again? It's got it going down. It's before. You have to reset the... Uh, my UPS guy dropped it from the second floor. <laughs> Down the stairs, though. Money shot, yeah. And the height we drop at varies on the way to the box. The lighter the box, the higher it, higher up it goes. Give us the three, two, one. Okay, thanks. Three, two, one. This is vibration, and that's package drop over there. Well, this is a vibration too. So 
By now we've assumed that the uh, workstation has gotten to the customer in one piece, right? Because we've done all that testing on the packaging. Here we're running an operational test. And what we're doing is, you know, the uh, customer environment might have some vibration in it too. Let's say you're working on an assembly line floor or something, and you have a bunch of robots making vibration. What we're doing here is just making sure that the computer still operates, functions. We run this in all three axes as well. So we, we have a vertical version of this one as well. Okay. Follow me. So one of the other things that can happen in a customer environment is uh, you, your computer can get bumped, right? Let's say it's on, you're moving it, and you just, that last little bit of pulling your fingers out, it goes thump, right? Um, or maybe you shut off your computer, you're moving it to another part of your facility, and it's on a cart going across a bumpy uh, section of concrete. So we're going to do some, uh, some shock tests on all of those computers. And this is, again, a, a non-packaging test. So the computer, and, and we don't have one up there, but the table just kind of goes like that. So a pretty firm, short, short duration, high G pulse, relatively high G pulse. We do that on all six sides. Right? Um, and then, of course, if it's the non-operating version of that test, we turn it on after every one of those drops to make sure that it still works. Um, this test over here that I'm going to demonstrate is a little more severe. Stop. We're going to stop at 25 inches. Okay, so this is where, where Mike gets to push the button. But you're going to have to put the safety glass in there. Okay. Push the button. So what you're going to do is you're going to arm it here okay. and then push it there. Okay? You need both fingers at the same time. Ouch. So <laughs> what I demonstrated there was a 30G drop. The reason we do that, thank you. Um, the reason we do that is because if you can imagine the um, the uh, package environment, the package drop, when the box hits the ground, it stops right away, kind of like this, kind of like this test. But since we have the foam in there, it tends to even out that that impact and that energy, right? And the foam limits the maximum G that we get, but it spreads it out over more time, right? So what we find with this test is. It really is one of the most rigorous tests we do, and we will find if we find something in the uh, in the um, in the design that's too weak, we can go back and redesign. So this is really kind of our torture test for yeah. for the computers. So uh, again, we test all six faces. So you can imagine when the you know, on the face where we're laying on the door and the motherboard is up and the cards are suspended down. Say you got a really heavy graphics card in there, it's going to tend to want to pop out of it, right? So if we see that, we go back and we redesign that that uh, mechanism, that retention mechanism. So the whole idea of this lab, the 10 meter chamber, is we test early, we test often, right? We test the earliest prototypes in the design. We'll test every single phase of a design, and we'll even test after we've released, right? So. Um, we end, if, if at any time we see a problem, we'll redesign, put it back into the design, we'll make sure it goes into our next generation, right? So um, test early, test often, hopefully we find the problem so that our customers don't. Right. Any final questions for Jim? We're going to head on over to the material sciences lab next. Okay. okay. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Enjoy your stay. I'll see you guys at lunch.